In this video, I will explain vertical farming, what it is and what kind of different vertical farming designs are currently being developed around the globe. What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Oliver and on this channel, we talk about everything that you need to know about hydroponics and vertical farming. So what is vertical farming? Well, vertical farming is a specialized application of hydroponic farming in which plants are grown without any soil. In addition, instead of using just a single horizontal plane of production, like what is typical in conventional farming and hydroponic greenhouses, vertical farming utilizes both the horizontal and vertical planes of production. So instead of maximizing the yield per square unit of land used, as is done in conventional farming and in hydroponic greenhouses, vertical farming strives to maximize the production per cubic unit of land used. In terms of what you can grow in vertical farms, as of today, the technology is particularly suitable for the production of small horticultural crops such as leafy greens, vegetables and certain berries. But you should note that many companies are also experimenting growing a wide variety of edible plants like mushrooms, potatoes and edible flowers. While large crops like grains and other tall field plants can be and indeed are currently being grown in single plane hydroponic systems, the height of such plants does not really allow the efficient use of the vertical farming planes and thus cannot yet be considered economically viable. However, a lot of research is currently being put into the production of protein dense crops and as an example, our team has already been successful in growing soybeans in the vertical farming systems that you can see right behind me. By the way, if you're interested in hearing more about our technology, check out our website through the links in the description box below. Anyways, while the definition for vertical farming is commonly understood to mean vertical plane production, it's good to understand that vertical farming is just a top level term for a wide range of farming techniques. In fact, vertical farming can be divided into a range of different growth systems with different technologies and use cases. Regardless, vertical farming is often associated with urban indoor farming that has been growing significantly during the last 10 years. So in a previous video, we spoke about the different types of hydroponic farming systems and techniques. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out right here. In that video, we learned that hydroponics can be done using a liquid culture system or as an aggregate culture system. And it can use a range of growing techniques, including aeroponics, aquaponics, nutrient film technique, deep water culture, ebb and flow systems, drip systems, and wick systems. All of these hydroponic systems and techniques are also applicable for vertical farming. However, in addition to these techniques, vertical farming can also be divided into two broad categories, the stacked horizontal systems and the vertical surface systems. So while researchers and practitioners have not yet come to agreement on exact definitions for these two categories, nor to each of their individual subcategories, I would argue that Beckham, Vickers, and Monaghan offer the best description for each. I would really recommend that you read their article, a link in the description box below, as it gives great insight into the current state of vertical farming markets. However, to summarize, the stacked horizontal systems comprise multiple layers or tiers of growing platforms with a multitude of different designs and functionalities used most often either in greenhouses or in controlled environment facilities. Stacked systems can be built from fixed or rotating platforms with the growth in environment being open or isolated. In open systems, all plants are exposed to the same environmental variables, while in an isolated system, each tier has its own individual environmental control system to help with temperature, humidity, pest controls, and so on. Using these kinds of self-contained tiers also allows the lights and other growth critical variables to be optimized for each individual plant. These individual controls allow a wider range of plants to be grown in the same system because each tier can be tailored to suit a separate plant. In addition to the previous systems, stacked systems can also utilize a balcony design in which the plants grow on physical outcrops that extend from a wall. Next, let's talk about vertical surface systems. So vertical surface systems can be divided into three rough subcategories. These subcategories are the green walls, cylindrical growth units and vertical tower units. Green wall farming is a promising type of hydroponics in which plants are grown in vertically inclined growing platforms. In fact, the green wall designs have shown some significant promises, particularly in urban container and indoor farming, and it is also the design that our systems are based on. 
In addition to the green walls, vertical surface systems can be based on cylindrical growth units in which plants are grown one above another around the surface of an upright cylindrical growth unit. While these systems can achieve a high production level per unit of land used, the design is not necessarily suitable for all applications due to the need to have access to 360 degrees around the cylinder for harvesting. Anyways, next we have the vertical tower designs. This design, which one could argue is behind many of the current vertical surface designs, was pioneered by Dr. Nate Storm from Plenty, formerly at Bright Agrotech. Using this tower design, Dr. Story was able to demonstrate the efficiency of vertical surface systems as compared to stacked systems. Dr. Story has since gone to implement this design in large scale at Plenty, a US-based company which is backed by some of the biggest investors in the world, like Bezos Expeditions and SoftBank Investment Advisors. So with all the different terminology, categories and subcategories, one might easily get confused about the differences and benefits of each vertical farming design. While each design has has its own pros and cons, as well as their own applications, we would argue that a combination of two of these designs, the isolated vertical system and the green wall system, is showing a lot of promise, especially in urban indoor farming contexts. By combining the isolated vertical design with a green wall, we have been able to develop an easily scalable farming module that is fully automated and functions as an independent ecosystem with its own automation and controls. These controls are supported by smart systems that monitor every aspect of the plant's growth throughout its growth cycle. This allows individual modules to optimize the growth of each plant regardless of the surrounding environments. This kind of an isolated design is an optimal choice to grow fresh food in urban indoor spaces right next to the consumers. For example, these kinds of vertical systems could be used to grow fresh food in restaurants, retail and wholesale stores, inside large shopping centers, airports or, for example, at university campuses, just to name a few examples. If you are interested in learning more about vertical farming, next I recommend that you check out this video where I explain everything you need to know about hydroponic farming and what kind of hydroponic techniques can be used in vertical farm designs.